welcome back it's smash boss here before i want to start with this video i just want to say thank you to all of my subscribers and also all of my viewers that are not subscribers yet so i currently have 101 subscribe subscribers so i really didn't think i would ever reach 100 when i started this channel and now it's i don't think it's even a year so and i already have 101 subscribers thank you really much for that and to celebrate this i already uploaded a short super mario odyssey speedrun that i recorded a few weeks ago but I also found a new trick in Mario Maker or basically I didn't find it but I finally understood how to do it and how to use it for your own levels. So basically the original finder of this trick is a creator named Giant and this guy if you know him he makes a lot of insane levels that have pretty complicated concepts and all of that stuff so mainly he does in his later levels mainly he does things about despawning and spawning things so a lot of levels you can play i will definitely link one of them in the description and I think that is still his most popular one. It's a very old level, but it's still great. The cluttered chaos calculator. Basically what he did was he made a working calculator in Mario Maker. So you can select two numbers. Basically the level describes itself. So, but that's not the level I want to talk about that's just a really great level and I still don't understand this one but a lot of his latest levels all are all about power block spawning and he basically found out how to make a level so that you have to put power blocks on a stack in the order in which they spawn so a lot of these levels have different things that you have to do but work with the same concept and now for example this is one of his levels this is the latest one this works also with power blocks spawning and now I'm going to talk about basically the idea, how it all works and the setups that you need to make it in one of your own levels. So I've created a little showcase level here that is showing the very general idea of all of this. And in general, you've got six power blocks. You can't really do much with them. If you activate them, that's not what you have to do. So you cannot carry them up here because there are vines and spikes all over the place. So there's also a reset door right here in case you activated one of the powers. And the thing is, the only way we can use the power blocks without activating them is by placing them right here. So now I just place them randomly 
and now they build a stack and this lets me get over this gap right here so now I have a P switch also and when I activate it I have to go down here to the key door but the problem is I don't get a key and the mantra falls down and kills me so this means that I did the wrong thing and now here comes the trick so you have to put the power blocks in a specific order and of all the orders you can put these power blocks in exactly one order will work and that's the order of the power blocks when they spawn so basically the order of how they spawn so which one spawns first and which one spawns after that so the mechanism behind this is it starts in the bottom left so down here you can't see it but I can put Mario here but in general it's as far down left as you can go if there would be a power block right here where Mario is this would be the first one and then it goes row wise so all the way to the right then the second one so if you go all the way to the right then you come back and go one block up then go all the way to the right here and so on so that's the that's the way that power blocks are spawned when the room loads and now you may think but what does this have to do with the level so how can you possibly create something that wants you to put the power blocks in a specific order because in general there shouldn't be any difference between the power block that spawns first and the power block that spawns last and all the power blocks in between but as giant found out there is actually difference and you can maybe see it so now first of all I want to make clear how these power blocks can be seen as a stack so if we want to stack them right in order to beat the level this one would be the first because it's the one that is on the closest to the bottom so if we start here and we go this row to the right then we end up at this power block first then there are no more power blocks in this row so now we go one block up then there's this power block we go another two blocks up because in this row there's no power block at all then it's three four five this one right here and to its right is number six so that's the order that we want to beat the level and now I'll start to put the power blocks together and basically when I want to put them in this contraption that I have right here the order is getting reversed so this was the first one right now and now it's the one that's that will be on top so it's basically the last one so we have reverse order on this platform but if I would put them in the normal order so if I just put them as a stack on top of each other now you can see I actually did the right order so one two three and four but since the contraction changes the order the order that you want to beat the level would be four three two one so 
if I would have this stack right now, just as it is on this platform, it would be in the wrong order. So, and now if I take one of the power blocks, you can see that there is a tiny little gap between all the other power blocks when they fall down. You have to look really close, so I will maybe put it in a slow motion so you can see it even better. And now I will put the same stack in the reverse order, so this one goes on top, this one is the first, that's the second one, then this one, and then the one on top. And if I take the bottom power block now, then you can see, well, I should have made it right here. So if I take the bottom power block now, you can see there's not the slightest gap between the falling power blocks. So for some reason, if you put the power blocks in the wrong order, then this gap is not, or well, then this gap is there. But if you put them in the right order, then this gap is not there. And I realized this a long time ago. But the problem was I didn't understand the setup that was used to check if the power blocks are in the right order because I didn't find any way to use this gap that's there or it's not there. So I didn't see any way to use this gap in order to create a check mechanism. But in the latest levels I finally understood the setup that Giant used for checking this. So in the end what we have is a stack of power blocks that drives on top on top of this platform. They will all go up above the screen and on this screen there's a bullet bill launcher. So if the platform goes up it will also pick up the bullet bill launcher and then there is the important part because this difference with the gap can be seen in another way if the power blocks are stacked in any order if there's one thing that's wrong so if there are two power blocks inversed or something like that then if the platform drives to the left or to the right, to any side basically, if it drives, for example, here to the left, then the power blocks that are stacked in the wrong way will move a little bit. So if there, this one is basically the one directly on top of the platform, that's that doesn't move at all, but if the second one, for example, is not in the right order, so if the power blocks are stacked in the wrong way, then the second one will move just a tiny little bit to the right once the platform moves to the left. And this pushes the cannon also just a little bit to the right. And finally, I can just show it. Finally, if the platform arrives on top, there's this setup with a winged potabu with a key. And the goal is to get this key. And that's exactly the setup that I now understand. Basically what happens is the platform goes all the way until this point. So right here where this square is. And 
if the cannon is in the original position, so exactly here, because when the platform goes the way up here, it's just next to the middle of the platform, so right here where the cannon will be picked up. And then when the platform moves left and the cannon isn't moved to the right, so if the power blocks are in the right order, they won't move the cannon. And if the cannon is in exactly the same position that it is when it's picked up, then it's just far enough to crush the winged potaboo. But if only one power block is stacked wrong, the cannon gets moved to the right far enough so that it will not crush the, the potaboo right here. And that's the setup. The only problem with this setup that I also had to figure out is if you just have the setup like this without the source and so on, then you could just pu simply put not a power block at all on the platform and it would also work. So because also if the platform has no power blocks on it, the cannon will also stay in its original position. That means that you will also get the key if there's no power block on top of the platform. So that's the last part and I don't exactly know how Giant does this in his levels, but I came up with a setup so that you have to build a stack of the exact number of power blocks that are in the level in order to cross the gap in the end because the stack has to reach all the way up to the top. Otherwise you cannot walk on top of it. So only if there are all six power blocks stacked in some way, you can cross this gap. And only if they are stacked in the right way, now they should be stacked in the right way. And only if that's the case, then you will get the key in the end. The problem is now that I waited too long. So that's the first one. Put this there. Then it's the second one. The third one. The next one. And then the final two ones from the green mushroom. Now it should work if I don't wait too long because the P switch is actually just to make the player to don't make the player think that there could something happen still because if I wouldn't have this P-Switch set up here that drops a mantra that kills you if you wait too long. Then maybe the player would be stuck down here and think that the setup is still going on and he will maybe get the key. But to make sure that the player realizes when he did the wrong thing, I created this setup right here because if you activate the P-Switch and go on this platform fast, you will have the key in time when you did the right thing, but you will get no key when you did it wrong. And just to make sure that you don't get stuck down here thinking that you may still get the key, then there's the setup that drops the mantra on top of you. And well, that's actually the whole setup. That's how it works. So now I can show what happens if I put them in a random order. I already showed that, but just to prove it, I'll put all power blocks in the right order, but I will change the 
order of the last two power blocks, so I will put this one first, and then this one. So now only one power block will move to the side, but this is already enough in order to push the cannon so you can't beat the level anymore or actually it's simpler if I show it like that. So now only the first two power blocks are in the wrong order and all of the following power blocks are in the right order. But that also means that I don't get a key and as soon as the piece which ends the mantra will drop. This is a really great setup for big puzzle levels. It can't be used in one screen puzzle because already the checking setup with the potaboo and all of that is so place consuming so basically you need a platform, you need a launcher, you need all of that stuff just to check if it's right and you need a few power blocks of course because if it's only two or three power blocks then there's a really high chance of finding the right order just by doing random orders. But for big puzzle levels this is definitely something that you could do. And now I'm going to show it in the right order one final time. So again I got the key this time and also there are more ways to use this. So for example one way that Giant uses this trick in a or actually in his latest level is that basically it's called something like protein folding. So you have a stack. This is the easiest example. You have this stack of power blocks and you have a start figure. You have a triangle and this is the goal so you want to put it in a line. And then you have one, two, three so this would be the right order but this is only the right order if you use this setup because if you use a different setup that doesn't invert the power block order on its own or that somehow changes the order of the power block itself then you have to rethink what order you need to enter into the setup so this is the first challenge in his room in, in his level and he did it so the right order is one that stays the same then the one that was right here where Mario is and the one that was on top goes last so if you have this order then in his level you have to activate the p-switch and the power blocks drop down and he just made it so if the power blocks are in the order that I showed in this stack then it will be in the right order when the platform moves. So 
basically the most common mistake that I also made the first time when I played this level was I just made it like this so I thought well I've got a triangle and I need to make a line but since the level was called protein folding you have to think this is the beginning this is the mid part and this is the end part and if you want to fold this into a line then the parts don't change this is still the middle so when this is the beginning setup then you have to use the middle part and put it in the middle and you have to use the top part and put it back on top so that's basically what you have to do in this level I didn't beat this level because the last part is really hard even if you know what you have to do because there are like 20 or 25 power blocks or something like that and you have to concentrate and the problem is I almost got it but I ran out of time in the end so even if you understand this level you still have to concentrate and also don't be too slow so and that's just the part after the checkpoint so I already did the first two parts and restarted from the checkpoint so I spent over 500 seconds on the last part and I almost got it maybe I will go back to it and beat it but for now I'm just happy that I already understood how this level even works and how all the power block spawning levels work and I hope I could give you some inspiration for cool new puzzle levels with this, le with this video. That's it for today and I hope you enjoyed the video.